Welcome back friends. So, we are in now going through part 2 of this course on fundamentals of materials processes. In part 1 as you remember we went through solidification, fundamentals of solidifications and the other module was fundamentals of powder metallurgy. In this part 2 we will be again covering two different aspects of uh, materials processing, fundamentals of uh, metal working which I will be taking 10 hour, 10 hour lecture on that and then there will be 10 hour lecture on fundamentals of thin film deposition which will be taken by Professor Anshu Gaur. So, I hope most of you have gone through the first two courses, uh, but if you if not it is not a issue because both of these are independent courses. You may uh, go through those lectures, the uh, NPTEL lectures uh, they will be available online. You can go through them and uh, understand the fundamentals of other two aspects. As of now we will go through these fundamentals of metal working and fundamentals of thin film. So, when we are talking about uh, metal working, what are the things that we will study? Let us uh, jot down a small list of items that we will go through. So, here so we will be going through fundamentals of metal working. What are those fundamentals? The most fundamental is of course, understanding about stress, strain and the yield criteria. Because whenever you are doing any kind of uh, deformation which is a uh, larger uh, large fraction of processes that come under metal working there you are need to understand what is the yield criteria because we cannot simply define those in our original simple terms of tensile test and uh, tensile uh, the yield plasticity from the simple unilateral tensile tests. And therefore, when we take a look at stress strain we will extend it further to understand yield criteria. Then we will move on to understand flow behavior again related to stress strain and related to yield criteria. Then we will take a look at understanding effect of strain rate. You will realize very soon through the course that there are three very important parameters when we are talking about metal working strain, strain rate and deformation. These are the input parameters that you impose during the formation or the deformation processes. And therefore, uh, effect of individual, the combined effect, all of these are important to understand. So, once we have the effect of strain rate, we will also understand the combined effect of strain and strain rate. Then we will understand the effect of temperature and the combined effect of all three. And then we will take a look at uh, go through some of the simple models to understand the mechanics and through that we will go through some of these processes like rolling, wire drawing, extrusion. These will be our main topics that are the main examples that we will use in understanding the mechanics, the force requirement and so on. Now, when we say metal working, what are the examples that come to your mind? One of the most common process, not most, but uh, some process that you must have heard of is something like this. Can you guess what this is? Here you have two anvils which come together and you have a work piece in between these two. Let us say a rectangular block like this and this is usually at high temperature and these anvils 
are forced against each other. So, this was extrusion. Now, in extrusion, you would want to know what is the strength or uh, load at which this material will start to deform. What is the force because according to that you will determine what will be the force that you will supply to these anvils. Then once you know then you will also need to know at what rate these anvils should move because what will that rate determine that rate will determine the strain rate. What is the strain rate because different uh, material will have different properties at different strain rates. Now, it is not only the strain that makes a difference, it is also the strain rate that makes a difference. Then wh why are we using high temperature, why not at uh, room temperature? Of course, one of the uh, simplest ex explanation is that at higher temperature you are able to deform the material easily, but at uh, how much high temperature? Would you like to have it very close to uh, the melting temperature? That will require you to heat it to a very high temperature which is very energy consuming. So, all those questions need to be answered and that will be answered only if we are able to understand the relation between stress strain, the effect of temperature and uh, the interrelation between these on the material. So, this is one example. Another example where you would need to understand the fundamentals of materials processes for metal working is the most common that you might have heard of in of all the metal working process and that is rolling. So, you have two rolls like mostly two rolls you can even have more than two rolls and you have a slab that is going in like this and a slab going coming out like this and these are two drums which rotate like this. Now, once you look at it, it will look like a very simple process, but there are several intricacies over here. First, what is the strain? Is the strain just in this direction or is there strain also in the in the longitudinal direction? And not only that, in most of these cases, we assume that the strain in this third direction is 0, which means that it turns out to be a plane strain condition. And in the plane strain condition, how are the different elements getting deformed? What is the strength? What is the uh, what should be the load that should be applied by these drums onto the material? Can it be thinned down to any extent? All these answers will come only if we understand the fundamentals. Not only that, look at the velocity of the material of this uh, sheet that is passing. Now, the if this is being deformed and it is thinner out here, then obviously the velocity at this as this part is much larger than the velocity at this part. If we assume that this part is twice the thickness of this, it means that the velocity here is twice that of this region, which means that at this point the material is moving at let us say v 1, then at this point it is moving at v 2. So, there is a continuous change in velocity from here to here, but the drum is moving at one single constant velocity and therefore, it would mean that the drum is slipping against the material at each and every point except at uh, one point in somewhere in between where it is exactly the velocity of the drum is exactly equal to the velocity of the slab over there. What does that lead to? That will lead to a lot of friction. How does that friction play a role? Is it good? Is it bad? All those things we will be able to answer when we get through these through the fundamentals of this course. Let us look at still another example which is extrusion. Now, there extrusion can be direct extrusion it can be indirect extrusion. The one that I will draw over here is direct extrusion. So, you have a die like this and inside you have a piston which moves like this and in here you have metal which is forced through this orifice. And you get longitudinal structure. Now, this longitudinal structure can be of any cross section for it for example, it can be a L section. You remember you having seen those L frames the aluminum shaped L frames. This is how they are manufactured. They are extruded. Now, here this is direct extrusion meaning the piston is moving in the same direction in which this part is getting extruded. However, we can have different shape or different configuration 
where when you press in this direction actually the material will also come out in this opposite direction. So, that is called indirect extrusion and there are advantages and disadvantages of both of them and there are friction one of the most important one is the friction considerations. But not only that how much again the strain is required what is the yield uh, what is the strength at which or the uh, stress at which the material will deform it will uh, start to yield or flow. So, those things we will be able to again understand only if we are able to go through this course. Now, uh, these are some of the deformation processes, but there is still one more process that you may not usually associate with metal working, but it is also metal working and that is machining. So, here I am drawing one particular example of machining which is plane strain machining by or the lathe machining. Here this is your cutting tool so this is called a single point machining this is your work piece there are several different kinds of uh, machining process which all come, come under metal working and this is your chip that is forming out. So, this is you are removing this part this part is getting removed and this is also metal working again not only how much load that will come on to the cutting tool which will determine what is its life, but also the strain strain rate and temperature will be different depending on what is the machining configuration and because of that there will be different microstructure on the surface leading to different properties and for that we need to be able to predict what will be the strain strain rate and temperature. So, one thing that we are able to gather from at until this point is that there are three important parameters when we are talking about metal working in most of these and that is strain strain rate and temperature particularly during deformation and that is what determines the not only how much load is required but also what will be the final properties of the material. So, that is that is what we, our whole course or these next 10 lectures will be rotating around. Now, before we move ahead it is important that we have or describe some classification for metal working. So, the metal working can be described into two main groups one is metal forming and the other is metal cutting or metal removal. So, all the machining processes like drilling, gr uh, grinding, machining all these come under metal cutting. So, you are involved with removal of material. In here you are always involved with some kind of deformation or giving a shape to the uh, to the metal. So, deformation or giving shape so these are the two broad classification but even under these we can further subdivide them into some more based on what is the direction of the force so one of them is direct compression indirect compression so this is basically describing which direction the load is working or the force is working onto the material because you are doing deformation or giving shape so you are applying some load or force onto it now which direction is it is it compression in the direct compression mode like in the extrusion that we saw or is it indirect so like in the indirect extrusion that was the indirect compression tension when you are pulling something like a tensile test that way that we conduct or when you are pulling a rod for example, in wire drawing. Then we have bending 
for example, sheet metal working that, uh, that involves a lot of giving edges to the metal that involves bending and then shearing like cutting the metal, cutting in the sense metal sheet, cutting the metal sheets when you are uh, dividing it or taking off a portion of it, then you are shearing it. And this is uh, most of the metal cutting processes like we said, where you are the main purpose is to remove the material. For example, you may be trying to make some uh, chamfer and over there you will cut or remove the material. So, you will be doing some kind of cutting. So, all those processes come under this. So, this is based on direction of load. Now, when uh, we are doing deformation, you will see that there are three main temperature zones people use and that has to do with the physical metallurgy of the materials because in these three different zones materials behave completely different. And therefore, this classification of uh, metal forming can again be divided into three different zones or temperature zones, cold, warm, hot and when I say cold warm and hot it is not at the absolute temperature. For example, even if you cold or if you if you even if you roll lead at room temperature it is not cold rolling it is actually hot rolling because it depends on the temperature at which the material melts. So, with respect to that we describe a temperature and divide it into three zones which are called cold warm and hot temperature zones. So, this is uh, one classification of metal forming and overall we have metal working in two different uh, two different classifications metal forming and metal cutting. There is still one more classification for metal forming and which is based on what is the thickness of the material. So, for example, if we are dealing with bulk material like very large pieces where we are the main purpose is to give a shape then it is called bulk deformation. And the other one is the, when the purpose is not to make or give any shape, but just to change the configuration like in sheet metal. So, these are called sheet metal working. And some of the examples we have already seen, for example, extrusion, rolling, etcetera, all those things that generally we relate with uh, deformation are actually nothing but bulk deformation. On the other hand, sheet metal working involves something like bending operation. So, if you have a sheet metal and you want to give it a L shape for whatever reason or you want to have a uh, emboss on the metal sheet, then those kind of operation you are not actually changing the shape, you are just give changing the configuration. So, the main purpose here is changing configuration and something like bending, shearing, embossing, these are all related to sheet metal working. So, if we were to define it, then bulk metal bulk deformation would be characterized by of course, bulk deformation which means bulk plastic deformation. which implies massive shape changes. And when we say bulk, what we mean is large or actually low surface to area volume ratio, sorry low surface to volume ratio. 
meaning for per unit volume the surface has to be low. On the other hand, if you look at sheet metal, per unit volume surface would be very high because these are sheet, these are flattened out surfaces. Here usually compressive stresses is what is used. Usually compressive stresses are what are used. Now on the other hand, when we talk about sheet metal working, this is characterized by local deformation. So, if you look at a bending operation, what you would see? Sheet metal like this, it has been bent from a flat, flat shape into this. So, wh where is the deformation taking place? It is taking place only in this region. So, it is a very, very localized deformation that we are talking about and therefore, it is characterized by local deformation. On the other hand, if you remember when we were talking about extrusion or uh, rolling or uh, uh, forging on all of those whole of the material was actually getting deformed. So, the deformation was not limited to any local region. And here stresses can be mostly shearing, but it can as well be tensile, compressive etcetera. So, these are some of the classification that is used, uh, that is very commonly given in textbooks that you should be aware of. And with that, now we are in a position to move on to a more uh, detailed understanding of some of those, these aspects. So, let us start with stress and strain. Okay. So, now every time we talk about stress and strain, we, we, have, uh, we always talk about stress and strain when we are talking about deformation, but then we need to define it at some point. So, let us start with the definition. Now, to begin with, you must understand that there are actually two different definitions of stresses based on what is the parameter you are using. What is that? Particularly when we are talking about uh, deformation. So, stress is nothing but force per unit area. Now, here if you are deforming then of course, this area will change and if this area changes therefore, you have to determine or you have to ask whether you are talking about instantaneous area or you are talking about original area and based on that this stress value would change and it will be called engineering stress or uh, the true stress. But in order to define this, we will need the value of strain and therefore, I would first describe strain over here. Strain particularly the engineering strain, so I will write engineering strain, again we talk about change in length per unit L length, that is the usual definition given for strain, but that is actually the engineering strain. Why? Because length that we are taking over here is usually the original length at the beginning of the deformation. If you have done some amount of deformation, then we say that what is the total change with respect to that original length that was there at the beginning. However, at each and inst every instant of time during deformation, the length was also changing and therefore, the strain value at a particular instant would also be different because you will use a different L value and therefore, we need to be, we need, uh, therefore, we have this two different definition of strain, engineering strain and the true strain. So, this first let us look at the our usual, the more common and easy one which is the engineering strain. So, this is change in length by
if you are talking about a very small amount of deformation or if you are not interested in very high precision then engineering strain is sufficient. So, if strain is low or limited precision is required then you use this engineering strain. Now, let us say you deform a material to some extent then you again perform another step and you deform it even further and then you do such kind of multiple steps. So, in that case you would be interested in finding out what is the total strain that has been imposed on the material assuming for, for the time being let us say that it is unidirectional strain of course, strain can also be multi axial. So, let us say for the time being that we are talking about uh, uniaxial strain. So, what will be the total strain after each of these multiple steps? In that case, we cannot just take this value because as we saw at each and every instant the strain was changing and therefore, what we represent at the end is not really the true strain and therefore, we need a different definition for strain usually defined uh, or in our particularly in our course we will use this symbol for true strain. So, right now I will put a subscript true. So, this defines a instantaneous change in value. So, u is the displacement x is the point at which this instantaneous displacement has taken place or if you were to approximate it this will become limit delta u by delta x x tending to 0. So, this will be your definition mathematical definition of true strain. So, this is actually talking about strain at each and every point in time and therefore, it is also talking about change in the denominator which earlier we were assuming to be a constant value. So, now whatever strain we get is our actually a true representation of the strain and therefore, you can add it if you have multiple steps and it can be very easily shown that if you have a unidirectional deformation then this can be if L was the starting and L f is the final then this will become d L by L which is equal to L n L f by L and therefore, you can again L f is the final length and L f minus L would be our delta L. So, we can relate it to the engineering strain and this will come out to one plus E. So, we are using E for the engineering strain and epsilon for the true strain. So, your epsilon or the true strain is actually uh, natural log of one plus E. So, do not get scared by all these equations. These are just straightforward things, but when when we put this in a formal may in a formal way it may look a little intimidating, but these are nothing scary about all these. So, you have all you need to remember at this point is that you have, there are two engine two kinds of strains the engineering strain and the true strain and if you want to find the value of true strain you can use this equation which is l n 1 plus e where e is the engineering strain and engineering strain we know is very straightforward to find delta l by l. So, that is the message from this. So, that is what uh, that was for strain. Now, similarly we will have two different equations for stresses engineering stress and true stress. Stress if you remember is given by force by area. Now, again what we like we mentioned earlier that if your area itself is changing then it means that your stress should also be changing and therefore, if you want the instantaneous stress you will have to have instantaneous area just like we if you wanted to have instantaneous strain you needed to have instantaneous denominator value and that is why the true strain value was more accurate. If you take f by a naught where a naught is your original area 
even after deformation if you take this then this gives you the engineering stress. So, this is your what what change do we need to make if we want to make it a true strain or uh, sorry the true stress then we need to change it to f over a instantaneous. So, we will come back to this equation again in the next class. So, just remember that there are two different strains and two different stress we will come uh, we will show what will be the equation or relation for sigma true just like uh, we had the relation for true strain we can also have a relation for true stress. So, we will come back to this in the next class.